You're listening to the Super League Pod. No worries this week as you tune in to the 134th episode of your favourite rugby league podcast. Mark and Tom are here with all your feedback and shout outs. News from around the world of rugby league. We'll be looking back at round four of Super League, bringing you our previews for round five of regular season competition. And the trivial wrap up takes a turn for the worse as we leave the answers hanging out there for you guys. So tune in and give us your thoughts on that. Strap yourselves in, kids. It's got the makings of a classic it's your podcast the super league pod So, hello everyone, welcome to the Super League pod, uh, Tom and Mark here as always, bringing you all things Rugby League, welcome to the show, Mark, how are you? I'm okay Tom, how about yourself? I'm doing very well indeed sir. Have you had an exciting week since the last recording? I wouldn't, it's not been groundbreakingly exciting, there's been no kind of major events or, or, or day trips out or anything, so no, it's been... Uh, it's been you went st- to the cinema. It's been steady away. I did go to the cinema, you're absolutely right, I went to see Beauty and the Beast yesterday afternoon with Erin, which was, it was really good, like, in the sense that I can appreciate that the effort they've gone to to make it was a lot, and they've spent a lot of money on it. I didn't enjoy it. Was it like a musical, or it was, was it like, uh, just without, or did it not have the songs? No, it had all the songs. It was, it was, look, it was good. It was beautifully shot and very well done, and you would expect it to be of a high standard with it being a Disney thing, and Emma Watson was good in it, and it was well cast, and it kind of meandered through the plot of the animated version, so there were some differences, and it was darker in tone at certain times as well, which I quite enjoyed. But then there were all the classics in there, so like the songs that Erin recognised, and and the plot was obviously the same. So and it was there were times where there were like shot for shot yeah. reconstructions, so you would see these little Easter eggs appearing throughout the film, and it was an, it was enjoyable in terms of I could appreciate it as a spectacle, but it's not something I would have gone to on my own in Fair my enough. time. Uh, but it made my little girl exceptionally happy, which I enjoy. As much as anything else, so to watch her watching it was kind of what I enjoyed, and seeing her little face light up. And of course, we've got Euro Disney in about a month's time coming up as well. So it was a nice little prelude to that. Yeah, in terms so you'll of, meet um, Belle. Is it I'll meet Belle. Belle. Yes, when you're there. So yeah, that'll be that's exciting. it. Exactly. Well, for Erin, it'll be exciting. I'll again. I'll get to enjoy watching her enjoy it, and that's yeah. you know that's. I'm looking forward to meeting Darth Vader, mate. That's where my yeah, that's where <laughs> my that's where my payday comes in. Darth Vader and Buzz Lightyear. After that, I'm I'm done. We can get my old day out of the way in about three hours, one morning, and then just focus up on her. So um, no, so yeah, Beauty and the Beast was uh, was was the was the biggest event, I would say. What about yourself? Oh, I had a very I had a delightful dinner cooked for me as well on Saturday night, which I'll not go into, but it involved steak. Or at least it involved fillet steak sliced very thinly. Okay. So, uh, yeah, carpaccio. I've never had a carpaccio before. No, uh, it's not something that's been on, on my menu. They don't do a lot of carpaccio in Yorkshire. It was, it was, it was very nice. Good stuff. It was opening my mind to new, uh, new cuisines. Ways of eating steak. Yeah, exactly. Raw on salad with pomegranate and parmesan, apparently. It's very good. Good stuff. Yes, what about yourself? What have you been up to? Uh, not a lot. Emma was away, so I spent a lot of time watching... So you've been interfering with yourself in the downstairs yeah. living room. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching the... Uh, I, I caught quite a bit of the NRL and then mm. had a few beers with some friends and that that was about it. Nothing nothing major. Fantastic. Well, that's a good week all around for both of us then, isn't it? Who's been getting in touch with us and telling us about their weeks and feeding back on the Super League podcast, Mark? We're going to start with... Some quiz time feedback. I enjoyed the quiz last week. Yeah, I listened back to it. I haven't listened back to the quiz before, <laughs> but I did well, so I listened back to like revel in my glory. But I am still quite embarrassed that I didn't know Jack Reed's surname at the time. I've put together today mm. for the quiz. Um, the first three are in recognition of one of my little sisters turning sixteen. Okay, this week, and the. Others are of a tougher variety, I would say. Right. The the thing, a couple of them are things I was reading about something else, just for my own dorkish interest. Yeah. And a couple of questions popped up from what Wikipedia was telling me oh, at the okay. time. Oh god. So so we'll see. So I'm not um, going to be getting a seven out, a gentleman's eight out of eight this week, then am I? 
<laughs> That's what I've decided to call it, a gentleman's eight. Go on. Well, we'll start with uh, from last week, though. Uh, Darts at Mitchell Darts, always the first to get in touch on the quiz because he, he listens to it first whilst we're all asleep. I have to say, but it's just to clue you in a bit too much information on my life. Normally, I get up in the morning, get my little girl a cereal and go for a poo while she's eating it, and I have a quick look on Twitter, and invariably your comments are the first thing I read during my morning movement. On a Tuesday. Yes. Uh, he said... I was yelling out Jack Reed for Tom. Seven out of eight. <laughs> seven out of eight in the trivia would have, would have been eight, but was too slow to say Mossad before Tom. Oh, have I robbed him of a victory? Well, Tom he, on his toes. He's claiming bit, it, isn't he? But yeah, he can have that. When you hear it, is, uh, Paul Michael Craig replied to that and said he was the same. Yeah. So well done to you two both. Uh, still in performances as always. Doctor Bob Phillips got in touch and he said I got two questions right. Hashtag crap RL fan. Um, I'm always disinclined to criticise the efforts of, of Dr. Bob Phillips I'm pretty he sure he's got more outside the sphere of rugby in his brain exactly. there's, a, your bra- there's a finite amount of space in that brain and it would be a shame if it was getting taken up with rugby league trivia Colin Render replied to that and said to, to Dr. Bob and towards I did better this week even got the one Tom struggled on Jack, 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 Jack something um, which is it's good for Colin that because Colin was moaning like the use of NRL based questions and these were all links to the NRL they so, were exactly um, so well done uh, Colin yes bravo uh, Sean Bruiser he said first one I've ever got on correct on the quiz was Tyro McCarthy and it was from the Man Crush Clue did we get back and find out whether or not Tyro McCarthy is actually still on the books at St George uh, well all I, from what I can see he still is yeah right um, anyway, Fair. I didn't check into whether he's been playing in the hmm. you know reserve grades or anything. Yeah. Though uh, David Power, David Powell got in touch at Saint David two nine one one. If you want to follow this Saint Helens fan on Twitter, he says, "Bloody hell, I had no idea Pie Eaters was from mining. Same as Jammy is in Cumbria. Major insult up there. Yes, yes, it is. I've seen that come to fruition in Cumbria. Well, there's a, it's slightly different, mm. but it is Jam- it's insulting. Jammy is, I think, is." more insulting in in, in yes. a way because it's basically telling people how poor they are because it, it stems from people being too poor to have meat or cheese on the sandwiches so yeah. they had jam sandwiches yeah. instead. Yeah. But the pie eater thing comes from um, Wigan miners and Lee miners were all on strike mm-hmm. at the same time in the mid-1920s it was. And the Wigan... Miners returned to work, breaking the the strike sooner because I guess through some sort of sense of I don't know guilt about being able to produce the power to run the town and the factories and all of those things. I don't know, mm. um, but the Lee contingent held out longer and they were awarded with much better paying conditions. I see, and so it, it, the sort of phrase in the headlines and stuff was that the Wigan miners were forced to eat humble pie I see which makes them on, pie on their choice which which was where the pie is from what I understand that's where the pie is thing started from it's, it's nothing to do with the copious amounts of pies or you know pie bombs or that sort of thing but, um, this, but obviously they it's been embraced that on them. They should, they've taken that on in the years that have followed haven't they? been embraced by the town beyond that yeah <laughs> but um, obviously having never lived in the town or not been from the town there you go. But that's an interesting piece of history. I like stuff like that. Yeah. We're getting a turn off now. Uh, Sarah McKenzie at Scoots28 Mac. I um, I suggest everyone gets on board with Sarah. She's yes. one of our favourites. But she did get into a bit of a pronunciation game with us this week. And mm. she told us, Tom, that it's Sneed, not Snaid. I, I was trying to look at I think I say Snaid. I think I did too when we were talking about him last week I think we probably oscillate through the lot though, I've actually now decided that the um, pronunciation is snide Mark snide yeah yeah there you um, go but yes Sarah went to the length of checking with, with Mark snide himself who said it's pronounced sneed yeah spell snide uh, spell snide snide <laughs> <laughs> spell <laughs> Excellent. It's not like us to have trouble pronouncing people's surnames on the Super League pod either. Well, it? there's more of that later, Tom, and it's yeah, very yeah. exciting news. It's, it's, <laughs> I, know, I think I know what you're talking about. But anyway, Sarah also got in touch to say, there's nothing like listening to Super League pod discussing important issues with other listeners to really help essays get written. I wonder what... I didn't know Sarah was... Well, she's Doesn't training, training for Yeah, yeah. That means she tell us more, Sarah. Yeah, well, we don't hope we don't distract you too much, and maybe if well, it's she has the she has the facility like, to press stop. So you know, don't encourage people to press stop. I'm not, encu- I'm not encouraging it to press stop, but what I am doing is is, is separating. Oh, this isn't live. Press share, not stop. Yeah, press share. Pause it. 
get your own work done, and then as a reward, you get to listen to the Super League pod. What better way to... Or listen to the Super League pod, then do your homework whilst listening to the show again. Yeah. Just keep listening. Um, but anyway, that's... But that's tell us what you're up. studying, that's fascinating. <laughs> the important issues were the, the name, pronunciation <laughs> dramas. There you go. Uh, but no, that was it, that kept me entertained last week. Uh, mm. Paul Michael Cray got in touch, he said, Good app, lads. Giant Charging Seagull, which was his Twitter name for a while last week, said, was a reference to the different Gold Coast NRL teams. Bit of chatter, that Bears may be next. Yeah, I've not read up much on this. I didn't, couldn't work out if it was that the Bears would be going to Queensland or whether or not they would buy the franchise and stay in North Sydney. Well, I, there was a story about this um, before, like last year, I'm pretty sure we touched on this, and I'm finally maybe mm. at some point about it being rebranded mm. and the club essentially being bought out and replaced, but stay the same as in, you know mm. all the empty seats and all that will stay the same. But um, yeah, so there were the, so there was a Queensland Giants or a whatever Gold Coast Chargers, and um, yeah, the Seagulls. There you go. So interesting times. So we'll see if the Titans, so then it'll be giant charging seagull Titans or something. I think he's, I think you're limited on character, though. I might have to, you might have to drop a giant. We'll see. Um, uh, Another one from Bruiser, he said, nearly turned this episode off. Wasn't expecting you to talk about football for such a long time. We got started on that, didn't we? It was current. It was, it was um, was current. We're watching it. It it was, it was painful at the time. If it helps, we've got, we've got Northern Irish football on at the minute, but it appears to be half time and it's Crusaders versus something unpronounceable. Well, there you go. So there you go. Um, We can't be caught out with mispronouncing things because Sarah gets on it and (laughs) tells us off. Alan Witt's got in touch and Lee Randall they both got in touch on the same thing it's 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 not a shock that they both got in touch about yeah. the all go goals coaching position so he said alright lads yeah Anthony Murray is our assistant coach coming down from North Wales it shows in the defence is what go. Alan said and Lee said um, that he, that Lee is assistant to Lee Greenwood and he also coaches the University of Gloucestershire Rugby League side in the in the Bucks League so there you go Get, getting himself Involved that's it. down at Gloucestershire, so that's that's nice. Um, and obviously, the way they're going this year, it's the uh, the coaching setup is working well. Mm. Um, Cutthroat Jake, no, sorry, Colin Render first. He said, "I listen to the comedians comedians podcast too. They've done some good interviews with other comedians." Okay, yeah, you can check out there's a 200 episode back catalogue of it. Um, Sean Orton actually sent us a picture as well of a ticket stub from a few, couple of years ago when he saw. The guy, Stuart... Oh, Stuart Lee? No, no, Stuart Lee's the guy who was interviewed last week. Okay. The guy who presents it, his, na- his surname slipped my head, uh, slipped my mind, but yeah, uh, when he went to see him a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. so obviously there's a su- few other people interested in that. So we'll get to John Padgett now, Cup Pro Jake, he said... Yes. Schofield always calling for youngsters in, in the England team. Maybe because he was an exceptional international at just 19. It may be a case of thinking that because he did it, why can't they? Problem is, not everyone is as good as he was. It's a logical way of looking at it, actually. Yeah, I don't disagree with, with, with John at all on that. I, I think, think it's it, a really good point, yeah. And that could be, yeah, that could be it, yeah. It's sometimes difficult with, with perspective, isn't it? But there you go. Uh, T Drinkers Unite on Twitter, um, or the Twitter handle at Langers38, which is more familiar to you and I and those listening. That always makes me smile. Uh, he says, Cracking episode once again from the dynamic duo. Alternative title, repeatedly solid. Hashtag, it's not a sex act. Sex cast. So it's not a sex cast, yeah, what's that? I think we must have been dropping innuendos at some point, or at least he's picked up on something we've said <laughs> and, uh, and, and has run with it, but that's, uh, yeah. Well, Repeat. someone else who's picked up on something we said, uh, David Cantrell at Dr Hideous, said, I don't knit. You've edited this. Yeah, because he You've also... edited this because he also goes on to slag off Morrissey. And this, well, we covered that last <laughs> week. People have different views and, and that might be Dave's view. But... I'm making sure that Mr Cantrell is sufficiently represented. Well, no, that's fine. We, yeah. people, I, people have other views. I did. <laughs> what, cross. We covered that off already, I thought. I didn't want to bring up the whole... We don't need to bring it up again. Okay. So, um, so anyway... Just Dave Cantrell's full tweet. What I was thinking about, though, is... Mm. Um, like, I'd had it in my head, kind of, that... Some of the things we say about Dave, I'm not sure if they're always true or not true. Yeah. And the knitting thing turned out not to be true, but... But it could so feasibly have been true. And I'm sort of thinking he could become like the, like the you know, like the Chuck Norris joke thing of the Super League pub because he is that 
like iconic a figure for, for me and you like every time we meet him we, we marvel in something new he tells yeah. about himself that, that we is think true. is amazing that's it yeah he's, all, all the all